All right, so let's take a look at section 1.2 here, statistician. So we're going to start by, we're going to talk about some dot plots in this section. We're going to talk about stem plots. You may have heard those as stem and leaves. And we're going to talk about histograms. So we're going to break this down into parts. So you can see we're going to identify a shape of a distribution. Super important because as we talked about earlier, graphs are never the end goal of statistics. It's always what does the data tell us. All right, so let's talk about a dot plot. A uh, dot plot shows us uh, each data value on a dot above its location on a number line. So literally, a dot plot is going to have dots above a location on a number line. Like this. Uh, well, let me show you. The picture looks like, if you look down, this is what a picture of a dot plot looks like. So how are we going to make that? So I want you to draw and label the horizontal axis. Draw and label your axis. So draw a horizontal axis, put the name, name it. Can't stress that enough. The quantitative variable underneath, be sure to include units of measurements uh, for continuous variables. So that's part of your label. Notice I'm saying quantitative variables. So dot plots are, all, can, are always something that can be counted or measure. Um, and it says include units. I'm going to say always include your units. Like if you look at this one, this is not a um, um, continuous variable. It's discrete, but it still tells us what it is. Goals scored. So that, that's good enough for your labels. Scale your axis. Scale that horizontal axis. Look at the smallest and largest values of our data set. I'm going to start the horizontal axis. So uh, at a convenient number equal to or less than the smallest value. So start where we are equal to or less than our smallest value. Place the tick marks at equal intervals until you equal, we want to equal or exceed the largest value. So when I look up here, you can see already, we have our number of goals scored and we go from zero to 10. Zero is few, we never scored zero, but we did score 10. Of course, plot our values. That is going to mean a dot above the location on the horizontal axis corresponding to each uh, data value. Try to make all the dots the same size. Space them e out equally as you stack them. Now notice, so when we're, when we're looking at this, here are data on a number of goals scored in 20 games played by the 2016 U.S. Women's Soccer Team, and they give us those 20 scores. Here is a dot plot that shows that there are 20 dots on this graph. If you don't believe me, hit pause, count the dots. So on a dot plot, we only have a horizontal axis because um, we don't need a vertical axis because each dot represents one game. So in six games, we scored one goal. In five games, we scored two. In three games, we scored three. In four games, we scored one. In five games, we scored three. Uh, six, seven, and eight, those, those, we never scored that, that number of goals. In nine, in one game, we scored nine goals. And in one game, we scored 10 goals. So that's what our dot plot tells us. Now, what, what makes dot plots really cool is we can talk about our skew, the shape of our graph. So our distributions, we always we don't always, we don't say symmetric in this class. We are gonna we I like to call them weasel words. We're always gonna say something like roughly symmetric. If the right side of the graph containing uh, half of the observations is approximately the mirror image of the left side, so right side is approximately a mirror image of the left side. What I'm, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for something that makes, uh, a, you know, like this. You could do it back upside down though. You could do it like this. So does w the right side of the graph look like the left side of the graph? That would be symmetric. Um, not this though. Not graph that looks not a graph that looks like this. Not that one because this is called unimodal. 
this is just one thing that goes all the way across. I guess you could call it unimodal symmetric, but just the right half and the left half look the same. I would call that a unimodal graph though. Here's where I need you to pay attention. If our data is skewed, if our data is skewed, that means we have more data on one side than the other. So if we're skewed to the right, now they say the right side is longer than the left side. What that means, if I am right skewed, we have the tail of the data on the right. That means the left side of my graph is higher than the right side of my graph. So my graph would do something like this. I'd peak on the left and trail off on the right. Skew tells you where the tail end of the data is. Okay. Notice we have more data on the left. We're higher on the left than we are on the right. That is right skewed. Right skewed tells us where the data tapers off. Left skewed, skewed to the left, the left side of the graph is much longer than the right side of the graph. So that says the tail is on the left. The right side of my data is going to be taller than the left side. The left side skew describes it is more usual to be on the right. That's what skew tells us. Skew means I have some weirdos here on the left, but it's more usual to be on the right. So these guys are skewing my data. This guy out here, nobody's as small as him. He's just, he's, this data piece is smaller than everybody else. These two data are still a little, are still a little weird. So they're skewing my data to the left. When I want to describe a distribution, so we want to look for patterns and we want to look for clear departures in our patterns. So, uh, we can describe our overall pattern by its shape, its center, and its variability. An important kind of, of departure is called our outliers. What we are going to do, let me see. What we are going to do is I call this socks. I'm not the only one who calls it socks, by the way. Lots of people call it socks. Socks. This is your reminder. You are going to describe, you are going to describe the shape, our shape is symmetric or skewed. And you'll tell me what type of skew. Symmetric, right or left skewed. You're also going to tell uh, the outliers. Oh, outliers. These are my unusual values. C is center. You're going to describe the mean or the median. And then S uh, is our spread. Up here, they called spread variability. Between... Uh, from what value to what value? Variability. Okay, pro tip. Always be sure to include context. I cannot express that enough. This class is all about context. So tell me what, what that it means. You're not going to say it has more data on the left than the right. No, you're going to say there we the women US women's soccer team scored more goals between these two numbers than these numbers. Okay, so let's describe the distribution of goals scored by the U.S. women's soccer team. So we want to do socks, shape, center, shape, outliers, center, and variability. So the dish, so I look at this, and what I notice is we have more goals on the left, fewer goals on the right. So the shape says it's skewed to the right. These game, these two games, the nine and the ten, we didn't score a lot often. 
It has a single peak at one goal. There is a gap between five and nine goals. That's the shape. The games when the team scored nine to 10 goals appear to be outliers. Notice I said appear. The median is two goals scored. That is the middle number. Median is middle, if you didn't remember. And variability. The data vary from one to 10 to 10 goals scored. Uh, make sure you use the word vary. Do not use range. Do not use the word range. Range is a single value that uh, is largest number minus smallest number. So don't use the word range. Do not say the data range from one to 10 goals scored. Okay, so we described shape, outlier, center, and variability. So uh, notice when we, did, uh, we talked that it was skewed, skewed to the right, we described a peak, and we described gaps in the shape. We described which number appear to be outliers, which, you know, it was very uncommon. Those are my uncommon values. Median or mean. And my data varies. So smallest to biggest values. Don't say range. So sometimes I'm going to have you compare distributions. You know what? This is going to be a great place to stop for right now. I'm going to make a second video about comparing distributions. This is a lot. I apologize for that, but let me hit pause right here and then we'll move on. Thank you for your understanding, statisticians, and we'll be right back with the next video.